Hello everyone, Jeff here. So lately I've been working on the Intellia Publish System and the Intellia Launcher, and we'll take a look at that in a minute here. First, I just wanted to mention that a couple weeks ago we didn't have a video. Instead, I opted to create a blog post on the website. It's been a while since I did that. I think the last one before that was the character creation demo announcement. So I wrote up a bit of a blog post that kind of outlines a roadmap from where we are now to getting to the uh, community testing of the phishing alpha. So if you're interested, be sure to uh, hit the website and check that out. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Intellia Launcher and the Publish System. So here it is, the new Intellia Launcher. Uh, quite a bit different from the previous launcher, quite a step up, a lot of new features. So I'll just kind of go through them real quick, but before I do, I just want to mention that I am aware that a lot of people prefer services like uh, Steam which can always be running in the background and keep your games up to date. So I do understand that, and the Intellia Launcher is not intended to be the only solution forever, obviously. We are not ready to go on Steam. It just, we're, Intellia is not where it needs to be to be on Steam right now. So we need something right now that'll help us synchronize the game between developers and the testing community uh, when we get start testing. So that's why we've built this launcher, and when until it does eventually launch on platforms like Steam and other uh, digital distribution networks. I don't know, at this point, you know, I don't know if we're gonna continue using this launcher or if we'll move on to something else. Uh, we'll make that decision when we get there. So just wanna mention real quick that I am aware that of course a lot of people wanna use something else other than this, but this is what we're gonna be using to start with. So as you can see down here in the bottom left, it's detected that I haven't downloaded all of Intelia yet, so it's immediately started picking up files that I'm still missing. It does remember where progress leaves off, so if I were to close this and run it again, the graph won't update, and that's something I should probably consider, making it so that if you stop it halfway through, it actually starts the graph up halfway through. A little confusing, but we'll keep working on that. Uh, down here we have our social media links. Um, the big thing that this does differently than the previous launcher is that it allows us to have multiple versions of Intelia installed, which will be very important for the development team while we're testing, and you know we have one version we're using internally, we have perhaps testing teams that are working on, you know, testing other versions of Intellia. It'll be real convenient to have all those installed simultaneously and be able to quickly switch between them, which you can do down here before you hit the launch button. Uh, another point on that whole multiple versions things is this versions tab. And this is where it kind of gets interesting. Here's where you actually select uh, what versions of Intellia you want installed. And you can see, you know, if I wanted to install, th these are just kind of faked for right now. I don't, obviously I don't have 6.0 in a way that we can install from the launcher here. But just for the sake of uh, kind of seeing what this does, uh, you know, we can hit install, it'll queue it up. And then when it's done with the current download, it'll figure out which one it'll start downloading next. Right now it generally tries to download the oldest one first, just because there's gonna be a lot of duplicate data with newer ones that it can avoid downloading a second time. I've done quite a bit of optimization as far as making sure that we don't have to download all of the uh, media files every single time. So, you know, like the terrain is quite large, it's about a gig in size. So if two versions don't change the terrain, the terrain hasn't changed at all, I don't want to have two copies of the exact same file, and this system prevents that, uh, which is really nice. Now you'll see along the left side here, we kind of have this little graph uh, going from development, test phase one, to release candidate stable. As we get a little further along and we start testing, that'll make a little bit more sense, but I think you can kind of see where it's going already. Uh, internal developers will have access to some of these earlier versions, whereas uh, if you're just, you know, uh, kind of like a, someone who bought the game down the road or uh, just a tester, you might only have access to phase, you know, testing phase two, release candidate and stable, uh, that sort of thing. So. Part of this that we I, I probably won't get into a whole lot is kind of there's a bit of behind the scenes going on with uh, your Intelia linked account. So this does require you to link to your Intelia account, your Intelia form account, so it knows uh, what versions you have access to and that sort of thing. Um, so quite a bit going on behind the scenes. I, I, a lot of people have requested that we have release notes, so I've put a little uh, kind of just a placeholder here for now, but eventually we'll make that work once we have the bug tracker in place. You'll be able to click this and get a good list of what features have changed in that specific version. So the other side of this, which is again a little bit behind the scenes, it won't be something that the Intellia community has to deal with, but it's something that I had to spend some time developing, is the publish process. For the MMO, we had a similar kind of thing, a publish process that kind of packaged up the game in a way that was ready for the players rather than kind of the way we have it for the developers. 
And I've put that in the Intellia editor. I'll probably make that a plugin so it's not something that everyone's looking at. But I'll go ahead and show it to you what it does here. Um, I've added some nice features versus what I had in the past. For example, this one automatically detects by looking at the Intellia executable, it can ask the executable what version it is. This is really important because it helps us kind of prevent some easy to make mistakes. Uh, same with this version destination folder clear. Make sure we don't accidentally put one version on top of another. So just a couple quick little sanity checks to make sure that we've got the version we expect to be publishing and we're ready to go. You hit the publish button here. And it's actually fairly quick compared to the old process. We could, we, it could take, um, for the MMO, I think it was taking around 20, 30 minutes usually to publish. Uh, this usually finishes within, oh, maybe you know four or five minutes at most. I think sometimes down to three, just depending on how fast it reads the files. Uh, it is multi-threaded, so it's going quite, it's churning through the files quite quickly compared to the uh, more linear single-threaded process we were using before. But you get the idea. It's going through, it's collecting all the media files, all the binary files, and uh, doing a bit of logic, kind of tidying things up and putting things where they need to be to publish. And, and the value of all this is having a really good process that removes as much resistance to putting out new versions as possible is, it really makes makes it easier for us to get more done. Uh, if I have to spend 15 minutes moving files around and logging the servers and copying files myself, there's an inherent desire to not have to deal with that when we do that. Whereas if all I have to do is go in here and pick publish, check a couple things and hit go, and it builds the files, uploads them where they need to be, and it you know the new version appears in the launcher, if that process is just a couple clicks for me, then we'll see a lot more updates when there's a bug to be fixed, it'll be a lot easier to push out the bug fix and stuff like that. So I think this is a really good stuff to have uh, well automated early on. And I'm really happy with the way it's turning out. So that's going to do it for this week's update. I hope you enjoyed. Now, I do have a few more behind the scenes kind of things. I need to create a, a bug tracker system and a lore wiki. I may hold off on that a little bit longer and instead maybe switch gears and work on some more gameplay stuff. I, I don't want it to go too long where we're just working on this behind the scenes stuff. There's obviously a lot of gameplay that still needs to be developed. So I'd like to work on the fishing stuff if I can. Uh, probably be another week before I can start on that. But it'd be really cool to put a fishing pole in the character's hand and actually start catching fish. So we'll see if we can get to that. I hope you're looking forward to that and I hope to see you next time. Take care. A special thanks goes to this month's Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the project, you can do so by visiting www.patreon.com slash